Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Craig Maurer, and we're going to be going over our webinar of Meatless Assemblies. So Meatless Assembly, when we start getting into that, you might be thinking, hey, what is he talking about? Well, what I'm talking about is our typical way of making assemblies is with mates. Are we trying to use geometry, faces, some kind of boundary to control our the movement of parts and pieces around other parts and pieces. When we start getting into a mateless assembly, what we're doing here is we're trying to anchor the origins of all of the other parts and pieces to one central location. Now, who uses mateless assemblies? Well, aerospace, aviation, Marines, all of these would use a mateless assembly. And why would I say these specifically? Well, if you look at the aerospace aviation and anything in the Marine, there's a lot of components that we're talking about in a very specific confined environment. So the Dream Chaser program on this one had a very specific outside shape that everything had to be encapsulated into. So we had propulsions, we had bulkheads, we had you know, electrical, mechanical systems that all need to be inside of a specific boundary. Same thing with aviation and jets or maybe Marines in their boats, stuff like that, right? Where everything has got an outside shape and we have to use that shape in our design process and trying to fit it inside of that boundary. So let's get into the mateless assembly. How do we prepare for it? The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to define a specific part and we're going to call that our master part. This part needs to anchor everything together, right? So we have a, an outside shape or maybe in this case we have that bracket. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that bracket to anchor everything else. So if we jump over to SOLIDWORKS, Right, and we have our bracket here. Now this one is made with our standard mates. So you can see that even with something small like this, we still have a lot of mates. If I suppress one of these mates, I can then get motion through my part here. So in this case, everything is really moving, but it's all anchored through this bracket. So in this particular example, I'm gonna make sure that this bracket is our anchored point. So now that we found our anchored point, what we can do with that specific part is we can insert that into our, our next part. So this is kind of like making an assembly, but we're doing it from the, from the assembly down instead of making individual parts and going up. So in, I'm going to abandon this and we're gonna make our new part. So if I just grab our new uh, thing here, I'm just going to go to our insert part and then I can go browse to that specific one. So in this case, right, we have our bracket. Now in regular old assemblies, we can just go ahead and say, okay. And if we just say, okay, right, it takes the origin of that bracket and the origin of our new part and it puts them together. So front face or sorry, front plane, um, right plane, top plane are all kind of made together with those coordinates. And over here is the things that we can bring in. So maybe we want the body material. So if this was made out of something specific, maybe that would be helpful. And this, maybe not so much. We have part material and we also have surface bodies. If we had like a surface geometry that we we're trying to do. So again, bringing it back to the SNC or aviations, there's usually that outside shape is usually a surface geometry that's not thickened yet. Um, so maybe that's something that we can use. And we also have the break link to original part. So this might be something that we want to do immediately. Maybe we hold off on that until later on down the road. Uh, right now, everything is linked. So if I make changes to the bracket, it would then make changes to this part's location, depending on how, of course, I build that. 
we can propagate our visual things. So if it was blue, we want, want to make sure it's blue. So here's our bracket. You can see that it's now linked here. And we'll bounce back over to our mateless assembly PDF. So again, once we have that part, we'll just insert that. And just like I was explaining for us before, we can hit just that check mark. We want to make sure we hit that because then all of our th parts are then anchored to the original piece. We have the break link for the other one. So again, this might be something that we do later on after we release the part, you break all of those links. So that way th uh, other parts aren't necessarily changing without you knowing about it. So then we're gonna start to build off of the bracket. So I'm not gonna go into heavy detail, but now that the part is in here, I can go ahead and build off of this. So I can grab that face, I can say sketch, let me move over a little bit so we can see that. We can even grab pieces of it. We can say, you know, there are convert entities, and then we can go and drop other circles here. Again, I'm not gonna get too crazy with this as everything has been built, but for the most part, you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Now, one thing to keep in mind is you can see that it is blue. What we don't want to do is join those bodies together. So there's one option in here to merge result. We wanna make sure that we uncheck. So now we have different bodies inside of our part. And now you can see it's a different color kind of indicating that it is now a separate part. We also get our bodies folder will pop up indicating that we have brackets and other parts here. Let's go ahead and turn on our uh, origin here so we can kind of see that. So we have our origin stuffed over here in the side. So this now, you can kind of see that this part now lives over here versus our origin is now here. So we're now building off that part Going into the, some of the options real quick, we have our feature scope. You might want, we need to make sure that we're, you know, maybe doing something with just that boss extrude. If we're doing cuts, uh, that's definitely something to keep in mind. If you ever do multi-bodied parts, this is definitely a feature. This area here is something you need to pay attention with. Merge result, make sure to always have that unchecked. Unfortunately, it is something that will always be checked and you have to make sure to double check yourself. So now that we're going to have our full body here, one thing that we want to do is we want to make sure we delete body. I'm going to go ahead and open up a different part that already has this. So here's our real part, kind of speed things up for us. So we started with our bracket. And then as we've built off of this part, we finally get to our final piece here. Now, the final thing here is to pay attention to this bracket. Now, if I were to take this part and insert that up to the next level or our assembly, not only would I bring in this bracket, but I would bring in this part with an additional bracket. So we don't want that. We want to then use a command called body delete. If I go to my evaluate tab, I can prove this theory by going over to mass properties. Our mass properties currently is sitting at 86 grams. If I go ahead and do the body delete, now we're sitting at 30 grams. So it did delete that particular body out of here. So now you can see we have our full part sitting somewhere away from that origin space. So body delete, I always think of should be the very last thing on your, your list. Number one is it's easy to go up one notch there and get that part back, get everything relinked by itself. Um, have everything kind of rebuild around that part. So if there was any other changes to that bracket, it would show up. And then we can then just use that one last step, full body delete and kick that guy out of our assembly.
or out of our part for our assembly. So now we get to the goods, right? The top level assembly. So on here, we're just gonna say, okay, we're just going to find our part. We're just gonna simply hit the okay button in all of our parts and they should fall exactly into place. So again, I'm going to close out of all this stuff. I'm going to go find a new assembly. And here I'm going to grab my bracket and I'm just going to say, okay. And I'm going to insert all of the other components. I don't have everything made for sake of time, but if I grab the one in the middle and I just say, okay, you can see it falls directly into place. Let's go ahead and turn on our origin so we can kind of see that. We'll insert some more. We have our female yoke, our male. Again, I'm just saying, okay, I'm not placing them into anything. I'm just simply saying that's okay spot. And what that does is, again, just anchoring the origins together. So there you go. The, one of the bad things about the whole thing is that you don't get the motion out of this. Everything that says okay becomes a fixed part. Now, is that necessarily bad? No, because all we're trying to do in something as large as S&C or any aviation company, we're just trying to get really big, broad scope of our bomb, right? So what where are all these pieces going to float we don't necessarily need to see all of these things move and spin around and and have mates all we need to do is have an account for it so if it's a weight that we're looking for is it an account that something's in the right spot that's what we're really searching for here now since these are all real parts if i do decide that i do need to actually see some kind of rotation or i need to see how things are going to interact with each other you can go ahead and build another assembly and see how everything moves these are still live parts this is just a really quick way of getting everything in the assembly now that everything's mated you can see that my mates folder doesn't have all that stuff here and everything will actually load significantly faster because we don't have to have solidworks go in there and come up with all the math to make all the mates work or not can you imagine all of the mates on something as big as that SNC project where you might have thousands of mates and then something change and then have to go back and spend all your time reordering the mates to get it to work out right. So that's where it's gonna start saving a lot of time. Now, one thing that you guys might accidentally do is place this in the wrong spot. Well, I can also go here and float this and I might put it over here and by accident, now it's floated. Well, like I said from before, if I take the origins of one part and I anchor it to the assembly, it's the same thing. Now it's put back into the correct place. But then you say, well, now I have a mate. I can always go in here and I can delete that mate. And then I can refix my original part that may have been accidentally floated or somewhere where it's not convenient. So just we're able to rebuild that guy there. So just to iteration here, what we're doing here is we're just saying okay to all those inserted parts. So who else might use mateless assemblies? Well, the parts are still parametric. They are still linked from that part to the original bracket. So if I were to change that bracket, those parts would then be relinked. Parts are built in real space and are fully defined. So even though they are not anchored to the origin, you might have like a commonality of that location. So it may be at zero, zero, but you might be building significant parts up in space at you know, 100, 100. So it might be floating way off into uh, the right field there in a positive zone. The benefits are the top level is extremely easy to work with within a large group. So if you can imagine having your propulsions group or your 
structures group, your instrumentation, your electrical group, all working together, which might have hundreds of people. Again, getting back to that, reducing that time and handling with broken mates that such a large group might face. This is also great for organic shapes. So again, with all these weird contours, it's really hard to get specific points. So instead I might build everything with these inserted parts so that I can have reference geometry to work with. Reduce mate saves time and resources, and it decreases the amount of rework. Again, going back to the mates or inserting parts or trying to maybe hand sketch a bunch of those um, dimensions off of another part, we can just insert it into our original piece and save time. So going from experience, I used to work at Sierra Nevada Corp on the Dream Chaser program. And this is the way that we were able to use this method. And we saved countless hours about the rework, about where things are placed, because we didn't have to worry about it. There wasn't a person in charge of the, the top level assembly, uh, making sure all the mates were working out. They were just in charge of making sure that there was no duplicated efforts. And again, usually that duplicate effort came to not deleting out that one body there. I would like to thank you guys for attending the webinar and hopefully that you have a great rest of your day. Some One of the big questions is, can I do this with more than one part? And absolutely. If I were to open up this piece, you might insert more than one piece in order to get your body to come out correctly. So you can see we have more than one piece to make sure that this comes out in the correct orientation. So that might be something else that you have to deal with. So I wanted to keep that in mind, a little bonus material for you. Hope that you're able to have this as a practice for your next assembly, maybe save a bunch of time with your mates. Thank you.